Hi folks, Rodney back again with Rodney's Northwest Ride and Reviews. Today I'm going to do a walk around video on this 2024 Tundra Crew Max Limited. Uh, it is a TRD off-road. It's been a while since I've done any walk around videos. Um, I am in the process of, of waiting for my new Tacoma to come in. And, and if you're new to the channel, uh, I do have a 2022 Tundra. It is a limited model. It is a Crew Max. Uh, with the TRD off-road. Um, I've really enjoyed the truck. I would love to stay with the truck. Gosh, pricing has gone up so much and, and I feel your frustration. So, you know, it makes more sense for me and what I do and and what I use mine for to uh, go back to a Tacoma. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I wanna kind of uh, kind of go over some of the equipment on the vehicle, uh, maybe help answer some questions if you're in search of one and maybe help you pick out that right vehicle. So as I mentioned, it is a 2024 Tundra Crew Max Limited model. Um, this one does have the premium headlamps. It does have the premium LED fog lights. Uh, it's got parking sensors, both front and rear. This one does have the panorama view monitor. So you actually have six cameras. So you've got one in the front, you've got one underneath both of the side view mirrors, you've got two on the back of the cab, and then one on the tailgate back there. One of the nice things that they've really done uh, with the 24 model is they changed the trim. So for instance, on my 2022, and I have the smoked mesquite, but mine has the chrome trim with the chrome door handles where now it's, uh, it's uh, painted to match. And then of course they have the black trim and i think that makes it look a lot better especially when you have the the 20 inch trd wheels this one is a long bed it does have the uh the factory tonneau cover and i'll kind of go over that here in just a little bit as well um, as i mentioned you've got two cameras on the back so one faces down in the bed the second one faces out back so if you've got a trailer that you're towing or you're trying to see if you're uh you know luggage or cargo secured you'll be able to see that you've got both a four pin and a seven pin wiring harness you got the led backup lights and of course we talked about the parking sensors you have your backup cameras here and you've got a light so you can see when you're hooking up to the trailer here's something i want to kind of point out and i found this unfortunately in the hard way the other day uh, but i was out i was out riding dirt bikes and I, uh, I took the key out of the key fob itself, and I'm like, I'm just gonna secure the, the key fob in the back of the truck. It's not close enough for them to be able to uh, get in the doors, and it wasn't you know, in a situation where they could definitely start the truck. So I'm like, I'll leave it back here. That'll be secure, and I'll just take the key, and then that way I can open the, the door when I get back. So here's what happened. I left the key fob back here. I came around, put the key in the, in the door handle, and it opened the door and the first thing it did is set off the alarm. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll just unlock the doors and I can get the key fob out. Well, it wouldn't unlock. So the key fob has to be close enough to the door. So I'll give you an example. It has to be within about a three foot proximity of the door, otherwise it's not going to unlock. So even though you can unlock the door, you can open it up, um, it won't allow you to do anything else with the vehicle. You can't unlock any of the other doors. Um, well, actually you could. You could unlock the doors, but it wouldn't pop the tailgate. And that's what I was trying to get into to be able to get the key fob out. So I had to break into my tonneau cover in order to get the key fob out. Uh, and so it was uh, quite an ordeal. Uh, but I'm just telling you, so in the future reference, don't leave your key fob back here because you may not be able to get back into the vehicle. This one here does have the bed step. Uh, you've got your tri-folding tunnel cover. This one come from the factory. Um, I've looked at it and I'm not 100% certain. And what I'm questioning is, could you take this off and put it on another Tundra? And it looks like you could, uh, but you've got bars up there that secure the front of it down. Uh, so it's not like aftermarket ones that just use the, the channel locking system or the, the slide rail system. Uh, for the tie downs. So I'm not 100% certain. The reason I question is because on the Tacomas, when you got one from the factory, it had pins molded into the bed that uh, you had to have a factory tunnel cover in order to secure that, or I should say you had to get it, the tunnel cover from the factory because they molded pins into the bed that it actually attached to. So you could use aftermarket with no problem, but 
like I said, I wasn't 100% sure how this one works. And like I said, you can see the rails coming down on each side, but it secures to the front of the tonneau cover itself. So anyway, um, just looking at this, it looks like very sturdy. You can get up there and stand on there. Uh, it is water resistant, so it's not gonna be completely waterproof. Uh, but unless you're taking a pressure washer in there and you know forcing in the sides, it should uh, keep keep your cargo pretty dry. Um, it does have it does have drip rails there on the side that you can see, and so it channels the water if it does seep under there. It channels it around and then it can drain out. Another nice thing too is that this goes right over the top of the the bed. Uh, I have an aftermarket one myself, and it's covered because you can't see it from here, uh, but this, the way this bed is made, it slopes a little bit down this way and it kind of rounded here in the center and same thing. So the bed, it, or the uh, tunnel cover itself would like attach right here against the bed, but then there was a little gap here and a little gap on the other side. And so it would allow a little bit of water to run down in. So with the black accents on the limited model that I mentioned before, you know, the black wheels, you got the trim over the wheel wells, uh, and then of course some overlay emblems look uh, really good. Um, let's go on ahead and jump inside the vehicle and we'll kind of talk about some of the features inside. Things I do want to mention, um, you know, many people have asked, well, can you, can you lock yourself out of the vehicle? So key fobs inside the truck. You hear that long tone? So that's letting you know that either the door's unlocked, you know, or I should say door's ajar, window's down, you've left a key fob inside, you've left lights on. It's letting you know that something's going on that won't allow you to go ahead and lock the truck. If I was to jump in and say lock the doors, close the door and do the same thing, what would happen is it would lock the doors right away, but then you'd hear that long tone and it would automatically unlock the doors. All right, I'll start the truck here in just a moment, but I want to kind of talk about some features here real quick. Uh, so it does have power folding mirrors, and you can set that up either to uh, automatically fold as soon as you hit the lock button, or you can manually do it. Uh, it does have uh, memory seating, you got power windows, power locks, buttons here. So this is for your dome light on the back of the cab. Um, if you had bed lights back there, it would also operate bed lights too. Auto dimming headlamps. It's got this stop start feature. Um, I don't know for certain. I think that they've actually improved it for 2024, but on my 2022 model, I can drive many days and not activate the auto stop start feature. The default is to always come on, but you can always turn it off. And when you do that, it would have a like an A with a circle around it, it would light up on the dash, letting you know that that feature has been turned off. But it's activated by foot pressure on the brakes. And so you can drive it, and depending on how hard you step on the brakes, you may never activate that. But here's the funny thing. Every single time I would get home in the evening, i pull up and stop in front of my garage. And when I did, it would activate it and it would shut off. And then within a few seconds, it would automatically come right back on. And so it just, and I understand, you know, I'm stepping on the brake to stop which doesn't seem like I'm stopping any more sudden than I would it would be at a stoplight, but it's enough for whatever reason stops it there as I'm pulling into my driveway. And then I let off, it starts right back up. Uh, and then I have to shut the truck off again. So I know it's kind of weird how they made it, made it uh, work that way. Um, this is your PKSB and it, what it is, I forget what the acronym stands for, but it is a parking sensor, or I should say a backup sensor that as you're backing up, those sonar sensors back there detect objects. And so for instance, if uh, you were backing up and say there was a pole back there and you didn't notice him in time, it, the truck can sense that and it will take over and stop the vehicle. Here's the downfall. I put a bike rack back there and as soon as I put the bike rack on there, it thinks there's an object behind you. So I go to uh, get in the truck, I go to back up, all of a sudden it starts beeping and then it locks the brakes up. And so it catches me off or caught me off guard. Uh, but then it's kind of embarrassing too because you're starting to back up and then all of a sudden your brakes lock up. So anyway, keep that in mind. If you do put a bike rack back there or a trailer, as you start backing up, it's gonna sense that. Uh, just turn that feature off. Um, inside the vehicle, 
this is your your backup assist or straight path assist is what they call it and so it uh, asks you to kind of calibrate so number one it will tell you to pull ahead turn left turn right and basically what it's doing is it's trying to figure out how long the trailer is so it can actually activate and, and calibrate it itself so when you go to use that feature basically what you do is once you engage it you take your hands off the steering wheel and it will back up in a straight path do have the panorama view monitor and I'll show you the different views here in a few minutes. Uh, traction control, the default is always on, but you can turn it off if you're four wheeling somewhere and, and want the tires to spin freely. Uh, and then you do have the locking rear axle, but that only is activated when you're in, in uh, low range. You have drive modes, so you got eco, normal, and sport, and it's activated with the, with the dial here. You have a tow haul feature. Basically what it does is changes the shift patterns in the transmission and, and holds your RPMs a little bit longer before it allows you to shift. The other thing that it does too is that when you're coming down, like say for instance a mountain pass, it will actually uh, try to hold the RPMs a little bit longer as well, trying to use more back pressure from your engine's compression to help slow the trailer down. And then it also will shift down a little sooner than what it would normally just to try to help, uh, help with braking. MTS stands for multi-terrain select and that's part of the crawl control. Uh, so once you go into low range, you can use the crawl control and basically what crawl control does is it uses the analog braking system on each individual wheel and it does so at, uh, it does so only in low range, um, but you have to select the type of terrain that you're on. So whether you're in rock and dirt or mud and sand, um, that determines how the analog braking system actually works and you know it works actually very well and so I've got videos on my channel that you can go in and see to see how those actually work all right I'm gonna start it up here now one thing I will mention and it's so any of the limited and above so limited uh, platinum capstone uh, the 1794 edition, any of them that have the JBO audio system. So if you get a limited, it does have to have the JBO audio, but it is does have piped in uh, engine enhancement. And so what they've done is they've got some sort of a microphone that's either in or close to the the manifold on the engine, and that noise is pumped in through the speaker system. It's you can't adjust the volume on that. It's just always piped in. And so if you adjust the volume on the stereo, it doesn't change the sound uh, coming from the engine, but that noise that you hear, it is engine enhancement. That can be turned off. Uh, and if you have any questions, feel free to send me a comment, but I would be more than happy to uh, send you a link to a video that talks about how you can actually deactivate that. It's not something you can do yourself. You actually have to take it into a dealership. Uh, and what they do is they plug it into the OBD2 port and then they can go through a sequence and deactivate that. All right, uh, on the steering wheel, this circles back to take you to the previous screen and that pertains to your screen in front of the steering wheel. You got uh, left and right changes what you can see in the little uh, mini screen there. You also have some different things that you can go up and down through too. So like for here, um, what you're seeing there right now is it's talking about your trailer that you're towing. So you can set up for multiple trailers and once you do, it's gonna ask you, you know, is it a single axle, is it a dual axle? Uh, it asks you how much weight you're towing, <coughs> excuse me. And what that helps do is that calibrates your, um, your engine, or excuse me, your integrated brake controller here now you can set it up here and you can change the gain if you want to uh, but you can also do it from up in the screen that i showed you and then when you plug it when you plug in your trailer wires um, it senses that there's a trailer there you just have to tell it which trailer you're towing if you have multiple and then it will set it up accordingly get the heat turned down here a little bit all right um, so in the screens here, you can program what you want to see over here on this side. So currently it's showing the turbo. It will show turbo boost, uh, but then you can also uh, pre-program that to show certain, certain things. So I'll 
show you here in just a moment. So like it so it's customize the right side. And these are the different things that you can see. So currently it has boost gauge on there, but you can put pitch and roll if you're using your four-wheel drive system. Uh, if you wanted towing gauges, so that's going to be your, your temp and transmission temperature, um, it will show you that as well. Okay, this has a 14-inch screen, and any of them with the JBL audio system will have that, that larger screen. Um, I really enjoy that, and I really enjoy the panorama view monitor. And so I've had people ask me, well, is it really worth, I'll turn this off here, is it really worth having that 14-inch screen? And so the one thing I will say is that I feel like sitting in the seat, I feel like I sit down lower. Uh, and because I do sit down lower, it makes it a little more difficult to see over that right fender over there. Um, now I have taken it a step further. And so if you've ever looked at a Tundra, uh, you'll notice that it sits a little bit lower in the front than what it does in the back. <coughs> Excuse me. So I put a leveling kit on mine and, and added larger tires to it, but it brought the front end up a little bit. And so it makes it even harder to see what's over that, that edge over there. So the nice thing is that you have, uh, and this is using the panorama view monitor, you have your backup area here, you've got your parallel view over there. Um, you can set it up where it's the same color, excuse me, the truck that's in the center, you set it up as the same color as your vehicle. Um, and once you do that, um, you can set it where it's a forward facing camera. So when you're in drive, once you go below 10 miles per hour, if you have it turned on, and that's this auto setting right here, once it's turned on, it will automatically come on uh, under 10 miles per hour. So it makes it nice if you're pulling up to a curb or if you're pulling up to a wall and or maybe even pulling into a garage, uh, but it makes it easy to see that. Uh, but anyway, the one thing I was gonna mention is that, see, it changed to the front facing camera. And when you turn the wheel, it shows you your projected path as you see here. Uh, the nice thing is a lot of times when you can't see over that corner over there, you can see if there's a pole or a curb. Uh, and I've had many situations where I couldn't tell exactly where the curb was because it was so low, uh, but it makes it nice to be able to see in the cameras how close you are to it so you're not, you're not hitting it. Um, on the cameras here for real quick, uh, you got front facing camera, you can change the view if you want. And this, you can do the same thing if you're driving down the road. If you're four wheeling and you wanna see right beside the vehicle. So those cameras were facing forward, now they're facing backwards. Uh, if you wanna see what's in the bed or make sure your car goes secure back there, you can do so. And when you're four wheeling, um, and keep in mind, anytime you put the crawl control on, the cameras will automatically come on. Uh, but even when you're not, you can set it where your cameras are constantly on if you wanted to. Okay, uh, you got a digital rear view mirror, so you got your home link on the bottom of it, so you can program in a garage door or backup camera. Um, this is for your digital rear camera. The benefit to that, if you have, like, say, you have people in the back seat and you can't see out the window, or if you have cargo in the bed and you can't see. Um, you know, using the rear view mirror, you can flip the camera and that's a camera that's on the top of the cab uh, back there and it makes it a little easier to be able to see what you have back there. Place to put sunglasses or eyeglasses. Um, one, of the, one of the things I love about the Tundra is that that rear window will go all the way down into the bed or I should say the back of the cab. Um, this one does not have the panoramic sunroof. Um, sometimes those are hard to come by, uh, but you do have vanity mirrors, both driver and passenger side. Um, does have electronic emergency brakes, so as soon as you put it in park, it's automatically going to set the brake. As soon as you take it out of park, it automatically releases the brake. This hold button is 